You are listening to The Reference Desk, the Wicomico Library's podcast that connects you to your public library. Welcome back to The Reference Desk, the Wicomico County Library's podcast. It's a way to connect you with your library. I'm your host, Vicki, and my co-host here with me is Amy. Hello. And today, we're going to be doing a podcast called Big Eats on a Thin Wallet, all about how to budget your groceries and get the most out of it for your buck. This fall, in November, the library will be joining the statewide STEM festival. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. While the program is geared towards kids and teens, and we want to encourage you to check out all the fun programs we'll be offering, there's still plenty of ways that entire families can participate. The theme, because there's always a theme, is health and wellness, and we'll be focusing on healthy foods and exercise. Keep an eye out on Wacomic County's YouTube page for a video series on healthy recipes and at-home workouts. In preparation for STEM Fest in November, this month we'll be going over little tips and tricks when it comes to eating healthy on a budget. Full disclaimer, we are neither dietitians nor financial advisors. We're simply passing on ideas that we have used and that worked for us, and we hope that they may work for you as well. It can be daunting when you go through the produce aisle. There's organic, non-organic, GMO, non-GMO, lots of variety to choose from, hopefully. Protein choices can be just as intimidating, regardless of whether you're choosing meat-free or omnivorous diets. It's so easy to choose a quick, easy, processed, prepackaged meal, and there's nothing wrong with them in moderation. But today we're going to talk about ways to stretch both your palate and your wallet in a delicious way. The most used mantra when it comes to budget-friendly shopping is buy in bulk. While this is a good overall way to save, sometimes it can come with its own share of problems. Buying in bulk requires both a space to store the excess until you can use the product, and a way to keep said product fresh. Buying rice in bulk, for instance, is much easier than buying, say, cheese. Yeah, when you buy cheese in bulk, you eat cheese in bulk. (laughs) So you have to be careful about that one. It'd be like buying ice cream in bulk. You know it's going to be all gone before the week's over anyway. Yeah, yeah, in my house too. Yeah, so with um, buying in bulk, which sounds great when you kind of work it out by the amount per ounce you're spending, um, if you don't have a good way to store it, or you won't be using it in time, even if it's stored properly, then you will have to throw it away and you are throwing your money away. So you're not actually saving any money. So my advice would be um, if you're gonna buy something you don't normally eat, like something new for a recipe that you wanna try, don't buy in bulk. Buy like the smallest thing that they have available. That way if you don't like the ingredient or you know you're not going to use it in time, um, then don't don't buy in bulk. Um, so we were so like my one example that I like to use is the pumpkin spice. So I love the pumpkin spice in the fall, but if you only use it a couple of times in the fall, you will most likely have dried cookie spice by the time next fall. Because so, it is humid on the eastern shore. <laughs> yes. So it doesn't make sense to buy something you use very infrequently or that you're just trying out for the first time in bulk. Because you really like pumpkin spice. Yeah. No, some people do. And this is true. No judging. Right? So when you do have the space to buy something in bulk and you know you're going to use it, you do have to be a little careful. So um, you have to find the proper way of storing it. Uh, a lot of healthy food doesn't store very well, like vegetables, uh, you know, like fresh vegetables and things. You only have like less than a week, I think, in, depending, on, depending the, on the, the leafy greens and things. Yeah, and, they get limp pretty quick. Yeah, you have to use pretty quickly. Uh, you can store things. If you store your onions and potatoes and carrots properly, they last a lot longer, those kind of root vegetables. Just, just don't do what I did and forget they're there because you store them in a dark place and then you find them in a puddle in the bottom of your pantry. And you're yeah, like, oh, that things? smell. There's something about potatoes yeah. like rotting. Oh, Yeah, so just be aware that when you put them where, remember you put them there. Yeah. It, just because you're storing them for quote unquote longer periods, it's not indefinite periods. Still check <laughs> on anything that you put in your pantry. Yeah. Um, so if you're like your brown rices versus your white rices. So the white rice is basically stripped of a lot of its nutrients. So it stores really, really well for a very long time. Um, but your brown rices, because they have the healthy fats and bran, that um, it's not going to store for very long periods because it's healthier for you. Uh, Same thing with nuts, your dried fruits. We might think they last a really long time and if they are stripped like super extra dry roasted in seal it might last. But a lot of your nuts and dried fruits are probably better stored in the refrigerator or the freezer to last longer. In an airtight container because they will absorb all the funkiness. Yes, well airtight uh, containers are important even if you buy that really big 25 pound 
bag of white rice thinking it's going to last for 25 years and it might but not in the bag so you're definitely going to want to repackage it into preferably something hard plasticky so that you avoid not only humidity which is a problem on the eastern shore mm -hmm. but the biggest problem probably would be pests so you don't want to put a bunch of food in your um, pantry forget about it and then a couple of let's say maybe a month later you have moths or mice so or bugs so uh, you yeah. definitely if you are going to buy in bulk intending to store it for a long time make sure you wrap everything up and put it very securely that you don't invite unwanted guests into your house yeah we even label ours uh, white rice versus instant rice because we have instant rice as well for those days when you need a quick and dirty like i i really don't have time to sit there and babysit <clears throat> excuse me even with like Instapot, Instapots and rice cookers, rice does take a little bit longer. It does, it does. But you never want to cook your instant rice on the setting you would for your regular rice, so you end up with mush. Porridge? Porridge, yes, but that's not what we're going for. <laughs> if it's not what you're going for, you're not going to like it. So yeah, but we always, always label them if you can. We have a label maker. They're fantastic. And... And honestly, they like well, even with processed food, like if you buy a canned goods or spaghetti sauce in a jar, they have those Best Buy dates. There are some wiggle room for those. Suggestions. They're suggestions, but you probably don't want to go past a year no. for Best Buy. That's, that's, that's your safety call. Like, air on the side of caution is better to throw away than risk your family yeah. having to have the trip to the um emergency room and, and to be expensive. fair those num those dates on most products are actually a suggestion cya by the companies that are packaging it um they're they cannot stand by quality indefinitely so like if you get something and you open it up and you're like Ew, it's gross you can't come back at the company and say you gave me a faulty product because they're like look at the date it was six months ago not also, our fault. It's like the milk thing. Just because it says Best Buy, still smell your milk because it can spoil faster. Oh, I've had that before. <laughs> don't don't automatically trust the label without. And I you know, used the smelling. last of my cereal the one time. The one time my milk went faster, I had used the last of my cinnamon toast crunches, yeah. which was like my favorite because I'm a child, and I'm not actually a child, but you know, in my mind, um, I poured the cinnamon toast crunch. I poured the milk, and I went to take a bite, and it was like sour, and I was so sad because yeah. it's the last of my cinnamon toast crunch. We always had that. Here, smell this. I'm like, I don't want to keep smelling your milk, but I was always mad because I have the very really sensitive nose. Right, right, right. So it's like, yeah, no. You should always still, you know, look at your food, smell your food before. Yeah, yeah. Common sense. Yeah. Just you know, make sure it doesn't look like it's going to jump away and run away. You know. Yes. If it looks off. It's probably off. Yeah, my, my phrase is if it's held in democratic elections because it's developed sentient life. <laughs> time most, to wash that dish. It's time to, <laughs> time to get rid of that leftovers. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's usually what I, I refer to it as, is developing sentient life in democratic elections because so, it's just evolved so far as a society. Uh, uh, <sighs> so uh, if there's a run on produce, like strawberries, blueberries, etc., a great way to keep it from going bad is to use your own time machine, and you have one in your kitchen. It's called your freezer. We can get into the idea of canning later. It may be another podcast. That's, that's a whole other podcast entirely. Um, with most of your fruits, all you need to do is to prepare them for freezing is to cut them into pieces and put a freezer-safe zip-top bag, making sure to get as much air out as you can. Air equals oxidation, and oxidation equals browning. It doesn't usually affect the overall taste or nutritional value of the food, but it doesn't look as appealing. And when you unfreeze this fruit to give to your children, they're going to be like, ew, why does it look funny? And then you're just going to end up wasting it, so let's just avoid that by you know, keeping them as airtight as possible. Apples in particular are very prone to browning, and adding a little bit of orange juice or lemon juice to the slices before freezing can help prevent a lot of it. Frozen, most fruits can last up to three to six months in the freezer, but a word of caution, due to the effects of the ice crystals that form when you freeze things, because um, there's all types of water in that fruit, and on the cell walls of the fruit, the thawed portions may turn out a bit soggy. This is normal, and again, doesn't affect the taste of the fruit. But um, great applications for this could include, but not limited to, mix-ins for oatmeal, folding into a cake, making a fruit jam, um, or even putting into smoothies. Yeah, I do. I had to freeze my bananas. I never finish a bunch of bananas in time before they get too brown because, you know, heaven forbid, princess, mm -hmm. uh, if they're slightly spotty, they, she thinks they're they're bad. Oh, yeah, but you didn't like them either. Yeah, so it's like those get chopped up and put right into the freezer, and we use them... For smoothies, they're really yeah. great, and they're really good for smoothies, especially if they're still frozen, because it makes it colder. <laughs> and you don't have to put ice. You don't put as, as much ice. If you yeah. sometimes you want to put a little bit, depending on what else you like. If you put a lot more milk in there, or whatever, depending on your liquids. Depending on your liquids, let's go with that. 
Um, so yeah, those are lots of there's a lot of really great applications for frozen fruit, and it's a great way to preserve those summertime fruits that maybe if you go to a you pick, and you pick a bunch of apples, or you go to a you pick and pick a bunch of strawberries, and then you realize what have I done? I've got a whole four quarts of strawberries, and we're not possibly going to eat them in time. Freeze them and then use them over this winter for smoothies or jam or you know whatever tickles your fancy um, over the time. Yeah, let's face it, fruit is a little bit more expensive, I find, so you don't want to waste any of it. Mm -hmm. They're such a nice thing to have, but yeah, yeah, it's too expensive to waste. Too much. Um, veggies are also good to freeze, um, but usually benefit from an extra step called blanching. Blanching is a fancy term for giving the veggie a quick dip in some boiling water, usually around two to five minutes. Uh, peas, string beans, and corn are super easy to do since they're small and cook and freeze very quickly. Carrots, as well as broccoli, require some cutting and processing before frozen. An important step to remember is that you will want to let the veggies dry completely before freezing to avoid the excess water freezing onto them and cutting the dreaded freezer bun. Don't want that. That is a huge waste of food, too. I it mean, I, I catch myself, too. No, it's in your freezer. Kind of layer it so you use, like, the first in, first out uh, kind of thing. Yeah. And other things other than just fruits and veggies, you can freeze some dairy um but it you have to be careful because it changes the texture so like if you can freeze some leftover yogurt and use it in baking but you don't want to use it for like like fresh like yogurt just eating it out of the freezer container because unless, it's not going to be the same right unless it's already frozen and you eat it frozen because i have seen people who like go on amazon and they buy those little like yogurt tube wrappers like they're they, they sell them apparently um you find that a lot of the instant pot yogurts sites where they like, I made yogurt in my Instant Pot, and I made these little yogurt tooths for my kids. I'm so great. And I'm like, cool, you do you. Um, it's a bit too much for me, <laughs> to be honest. But hey, if it's something you want to do, you go for it. But uh, if you put them in there and they freeze them, and then you just put them on like a push pop. You open it up and you can eat like frozen yogurt out of a push pop. And I was like, that, that, that's a great idea. That's really cool. Like I said, too much work for me personally. <laughs> But I guess the container keeps the air out, so it, it doesn't change the, the texture as much. Yeah, yeah. It's probably a fact that there's not as much air to get ice crystals in. And if it hasn't had a chance to thaw, the ice crystal damage won't get isn't going to be gotcha. as prevalent because they're still frozen. And those, like, basically, think about it like a balloon and uh, a shard of glass. The balloon is a cell wall. The shard of glass is the ice. If, like, those videos where you see the pencil stuck through a Ziploc bag, and it's not leaking until you pull the pencil out. So until that pencil or ice shard is pulled out of the cell wall or defrosted or defrosted <laughs> it'll still maintain its texture to an extent I love when you throw science in I love that's why the stem festival is focusing on food because there is so much science in cooking and food in general and nutrition and I, I I'm passionate about it it's our thing we like it, it it's it stemmed from watching a lot of goodies as a kid <laughs> I'll do brown Oh, yes. If you ever get a chance and you want to learn more about the science behind cooking, and I really highly recommend it, and I am not sponsored or anything. This is just personal passion. We don't own personally. We wish. Oh, God, I wish. Um, so, Alton Brown does this. He was on Food Network originally, um, and he did this show called Good Eats, and he's still doing iterations of it now on Discovery Plus, I believe, um, where he talks about the science behind cooking and why it works and what these ingredients do, what chemicals and how he talks about the yeasty boys, they're sock puppets and they burp and it's really adorable. Um, and then there's like gluten. He has like a little stretchy bungee cord demonstration and he just goes through and visually shows you a lot about the science behind cooking. And I found that fascinating. Um, and it makes you a more competent baker and chef because you know that if I do this, if I'm out of this particular ingredient, this other ingredient that I do have will work just fine. Um, within reason. So I do highly recommend that show if, you, if you're if you interested in that kind of thing. Especially if you're learning the basics. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. If you learn the basics, it's a good place to start. And it's entertaining. Um, he does lots of skits and there's lots of costumes and goofiness, which is exactly where I want to be. <laughs> yeah. And you can also freeze certain cheeses that won't really affect the chest texture when it defrosts. Um, yeah, harder it. cheeses get a little crumblier, but they seem to, to they freeze better. better. Well, there's but a moisture. Can, if it's like really well wrapped and prepared for freezing. It's cute that you think I'm not eating an entire block of feta in one sitting. Oh my gosh, I love feta. Feta is so great. So, <laughs> I, I like a little bit of salad greens with my feta. Yeah, and they throw a couple of olives in there to round it out. Also, it's really great on burgers, I found that. I have had that on burgers Veggie before. burgers for me, but yeah. Yes, yes. 
But um, yeah. So your freezer can definitely save you if you are buying in bulk, not just like your pantry staples. You can do fresh as long as you have a, a plan B. A, 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 when, when it's time for it to start putting it away, we, we've had enough. Before it goes bad, this is what I'm going to do with oh, it. Oh, yes, every time. Um, and, and if you're not able to carve out space in your freezer, because you have to make sure you have space to freeze, um, your veggies and honestly it's one of the best practices is to freeze them on a sheet pan separately and then put them in a bag because chiseling apart your servings of peas is just not a great way to do that. <laughs> I, I've gone I've, I've had a big old mush pile of bananas that I froze in mm. like one huge lump that I had to take a knife to to, yeah. to, yeah. to make a smoothie. Yeah, it's a good way to expend some you know, rage. aggression in the morning. Aggression, yes, yes. I don't want to be awake. I don't want to. Um, but if you're unable to carve out the space in your freezer, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's fine. There's lots of other options for you. Um, there's always the pre-canned vegetables and fruit that you can find uh, in the grocery store. Most grocery stores, and even like you can even find in some gas stations. Um, but they're already cooked, packed in water or juice. In the case of some fruits, corn syrup, so be aware of that if you are always watching your sugar. Read your labels. Always read your labels, and uh, they're shelf-stable for a long time, usually over a year, if not more, depending on what it is and who packs it, just in general, about a year. Um, even potatoes can get the canned treatment. Some things to keep an eye out when shopping for the can on the canned good aisle is in terms of general nutrition. Look for fruit that is packed in 100% juice. Many major brands and even store brands have switched to packing their product, product in juice in order to keep the overall sugar content low, which has been demanded by the public. So they've responded by doing it, which is great. Personally, both my kids loved, and I mean loved, those mandarin orange slices. Um, buying them packed in juice and not a light syrup really cut down the amount of sugar they were eating, and that made my mommy heart happy. With the canned vegetables, um, if you are on a low-sodium diet, look for the no-salt or low-salt, low-sodium um, varieties. Um, many companies will add salt to their canning recipes to offset the flavor loss during the canning process, and I'll try to explain this real quick. To properly can, um, the sealed containers in the factories have to be brought to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, usually about 30 minutes depending on the recipe. And this is generally way too long to cook most vegetables. String beans and peas, as well as carrots, often end up softer than if you were to cook them from fresh. And a lot of the flavor also leaches out into the packing liquid. To offset this, the manufacturers will often add salt to the recipe to boost the flavor that's left. And as salt is a really good amplifying, f f as salt is really good at amplifying flavor. All of this is not to discourage canned food. It is one of the modern-ish marvels and is a great option for families or individuals who may be a bit short on their refrigerator and freezer space. Globally as well, canned foods can help those in developing nations who have limited or inconsistent access to refrigeration to keep themselves and their families fed. Yeah, I when I was growing up, we everyone ate canned vegetables. Oh, it was the normal. Oh yeah, my, when I first had frozen peas, for the first, like my grandmother made frozen peas when I was like about 10 or so. And I remember tasting like, why are they wrinkly, Nan Ann? They don't taste like the they canned vegetables. They don't you were taste used like to. the canned and asparagus. I didn't realize it was wasn't supposed to be soft and slimy until I had it fresh. <laughs> but now we kind of wiffle waffle to the other side of the spectrum where it's like fresh or nothing. And that it, it it's a great idea because the fresher the vegetables and fruit, the more nutrients it has because it loses. But fresh food also loses nutrients since it's like been picked yeah, so once you pull it out of the ground that's how far it's gone from where you got it to where the store got it to where it was grown it's losing the nutrients anyway um so like you have fresh is the best kind of that mentality but then you have frozen because it's frozen where it's picked or very close to where it's picked so it's kind of like locked to that early nutrient level and then you have canned at the end of the spectrum um, and because it has been cooked, but you shouldn't be a canned food snob if it works for you. There is no shame. So if your kids like the taste and texture better, um, if it's more convenient for you as a parent, if it's what you can afford, focus on that, you know, the best that you can do, not the best that you have to do. Right. So, um, or you feel like a failure if you don't get that 100%. It's all, a, it's, you know, it's all good. You're getting your fruits and vegetables, then that's fine. Yep, yeah. and you're getting the nutrition, that, that's really all that matters. Um, and to be fair, being pre-cooked, if you are coming home from work at say 6.15, 6.20, and your kids are hungry now and you need to get dinner on the table, sometimes opening up a can of chicken, canister of peas, 
and a can of another vegetable. Tomatoes, the best, tomatoes. Are the best vegetable can probably. The most yeah, useful. tomatoes are probably the most versatile of the canned vegetables that they because you don't have to drain them necessarily. A lot of times that and juice is there down forever. and cook them down forever. You can have most of the nutrients that are still in the packing liquid. You can still eat that. Um, yeah, for sure, and putting them in soups and stuff like that works too. Yeah, that's how we we do keep a stock of, of canned vegetables, and you know it's a great emergency. Like if you, we always talk about being prepared for like storms and power outages. If mm-hmm. you lose all your food in your refrigerator and freezer because of a power outage, you know you still have food in your pantry that that'll mm-hmm. be good for them to eat. But yeah, the convenience sake. I mean, you can just dump things in a bunch of a, a stew pot and make a quick veggie stew. Or not veggies too, um, or whatever, or pasta sauce, or exactly. It's a great way to make things quick on the fly. So it's always good to have some year of your fruits and veggies in your pantry that will last a couple of years. Yeah, for sure. And the prices, the price point is oh, also be, better. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's basic <laughs> economics. I mean, if it lasts so long, they have a lot longer to sell it. They don't have to waste as much, and they can sell it for less because they know eventually that that can will be sold. Um, if you're omnivorous, meaning you and your family eat meat or meat products. There are lots of easy ways to save your wallet there too. Uh, most supermarkets have what they call a manager special, and I'm doing air quotes, you can't see it, but I'm doing air quotes, meaning that the meat is still good, but it needs to be sold soon before it's, well, not. These are discounted significantly. Uh, many stores also carry what they call family packs of chicken, uh, beef, pork, etc., usually ranging from three to five pounds of meat, sometimes more, if you can get to a bulk store like Sam's Club or Costco. Uh, chicken's super cheap around here, and that's just more of a, a ge- geography thing. We are outnumbered. We, we are outnumbered. <laughs> we are outnumbered by the chicken. Um, so usually that's what most of my family's protein comes from chicken because, you know, it's available and inexpensive. Uh, but anyway, it's a bit time consuming to do uh, the large amounts because sometimes uh, you can get, there are people who get physically ill when it comes to handling raw meat and it can be kind of gross for a lot of people and that that's cool. But <laughs> if you can, um, use a kitchen scale if you have one and want to be very precise, to weigh out one meal portions of the meat to freeze for later. And this, of course, depends on what size your family is and how much protein you need per meal and what you're planning on doing with it. Um, You can always just toss the whole package into the freezer, but from experience, chiseling apart some chicken breast is not a fun way to spend an afternoon. Yeah, I remember my mom coming home from the grocery store. We have a large family, and she would buy these big things of meat. Oh, yeah. Like even the uh, ground beef. Mm -hmm. And then the big tubes. Yes. (laughs) She would make hamburger patties and then separate them, I think, with aluminum foil. I don't know. It was using wax paper. Wax paper. And then she would wrap it all in aluminum foil and then stick Mm -hmm. it in the freezer. Depending on freezer burn, yeah. Yeah, we did the same. We didn't have a huge family, but, like, we still did that same thing. Um, where we would go to Sam's. Um, my dad did this brilliant thing where we went to Sam's every Sunday after church, and we thought it was great because we got to eat all the little samples. My dad got off easy because he didn't have to buy his lunch. <laughs> what a babysit. And he was like, food and a trip. Right, food and trip, and then we got our, you know, big bulk groceries. And it wasn't every Sunday, obviously, because that's just insane. But, like, every once in a while we'd go, and I, I always thought it was so funny that my dad took us, and now I realize as an adult, I'm like, ah, I see what he did. He didn't have to buy his lunch that Sunday. Um, but yeah, it was a big thing for us too. We had the big Ziploc bags and smaller Ziploc bags inside the Ziploc bags, you know. Oh yeah. It's a great way. I mean, meat is one of those things, even though I personally don't eat meat, um, it is a best way to make something that's a little bit more expensive because with, when, when inflation does hit, mm. things like the fancy vegetables and meat and cheeses go way up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's the best way to avoid, especially uh, to avoid inflation is keeping it low cost, buy it in bulk, kind of prep it yourself in that way yeah. and freeze it for later. And it all really does come down to as long as you have the space in your freezer, it's yeah. doable. Yeah, make sure you freeze your meat. <laughs> don't, put, <laughs> yeah. don't put that in your pantry unless it's like dried or... Oh, or, Lord, or, no. <laughs> That's a terrible <laughs> idea. No. <laughs> make sure, for safety's sake, it stays frozen. Yeah, and, and when it's frozen, most meat uh, will store in an airtight bag, airtight freezer bag um, for up to six months without any significant impact in texture or flavor. <clears throat> and even after six months... You could probably eat it up to like eight months later, but the texture and the flavor may be a little compromised because of the inevitable freezer burn that's going to happen. Um, so not like a grilled steak, but maybe something in a like you know, too. slice it up and put it in fajitas or something. You know, it'd be sauce it up. It's fine. <laughs> so I know Amy, you mentioned you don't really eat any meat, which is that's your choice. And that is absolutely fine. Um, 
What kind of meat pr- uh, meat free protein options do you generally rely on? Oh, for the cheap, definitely. Um, I eat a lot of beans, so we prep a lot of beans, and um, I also eat eggs because I have chickens. They also outnumber me at home. Um, so we have our <laughs> our pets with be- egg benefits, and I choose to eat a lot of tofu, which you can actually get in bulk some areas. So do you go to the Asian sale. market for that? I go, to, uh, you can, but um, I, they're usually on sale for like around 250 a pack on sale. I usually pick and freeze it because um, when, when it goes on special, tofu is great for keeping it in the freezer. Um, it makes it, the, when it defrost, it, the, the texture becomes more chewier, so it's more meat-like. Um, so I wait till there's a good sale, buy a whole bunch of packets, put it in the freezer. Um, even places like Costco, I don't know about Sam's, but you can get like tofu in these bulk packages. So it's a great way. I mean, it stays good in the refrigerator for a couple of months, so it gives you a little wiggle room. You can get um, a lot of faux meats now locally. The um, range of things that you can get, even in our it's area, F A U X faux. Yeah, faux. Yeah, not fake f- meat-like products. Mm, sure, we can call it that. Like Beyond Burgers are available even at Walmart. Um, you can get. Uh, fake meat sausages just like tempeh um, and usually in your freezer section or the refrigerated section that stuff tends to get pricey so also there's a lot of things that they kind of have to do to make it meat like so it's a very processed yeah, it's product more processed. so we tend not to eat that but on special occasions I will admit I do have a uh, stockpile of Beyond Burgers from Sam's Club in my freezer because it's been burger it's been grilling season grilling season so I've been doing a lot of burgers on the grill veggie burgers <laughs> but it can be it doesn't have to be expensive to be meat free um especially when you do like your staples like uh beans eggs cheese it, those well not cheese but mm-hmm. it, it can be pretty inexpensive and a lot of people actually do meat free mondays because it helps with their budget oh yeah for sure we do one meat free month usually one one or two meat free meals a week just because it's easier than having to like it's and it's cheaper than having to buy you know six meals worth of, yeah. of proteins i usually try to do like four or five meals with protein then sticking you know, with the unfancy staples tend to make your budget go a lot farther oh yeah for sure um and so far we've talked about very common ways to preserve food when you buy in bulk so let's touch briefly now on how to make the most of your ingredients if you are a busy family or just short on time in the evenings uh, preparation and organization is liberating One of the best things you can do to stretch your budget is to plan out a week or two worth of meals. Keep things interesting, trying different types of food, like we like Indian food for some variety or some Chinese, along with the Mexican or Mexican Taco Tuesday all year long, uh, along with the traditional American fare. And we think about the prep work that goes into the meal. If there's anything you can do ahead of time, like pre-chopping the veggies or portioning out the protein, Make time on the weekends, or whatever is your weekend, to prepare as much as you can. Um, Store pre-portioned and pre-cut ingredients in either a container or a Ziploc bag, and stash the whole meal together in the fridge. Uh, Bonus points if you bag them and label them together. This can significantly cut down on your daily prep time and cleanup, since you only have to wash the cutting board and knife once, along with any other prep dishes you may accumulate. When so you, you're you're kind of making like those uh the, those meal services. You're just basically doing that for yourself. You're basically on, doing it yourself. Yeah, you just put like maybe two hours of your weekend dedicated to prepping and organizing your meals for the whole week. And it's basically like those. I, I guess the brands are like HelloFresh or Every Plate or whatever they have ads out for them all over the place. Um, is a really great way to mimic that, um, but do it a lot cheaper because you're not spending. $44 for three meals. Oh, wow. Ouch. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was, it's convenient for sure. Everything's pre-portioned and it, that's something that's going to help you. There's no shame in Eat it. Eat it at home. It is cheaper than going out it and is, eating It's still night. way cheaper than. And better for your health. Exactly. Um, and I mean, I've done them before and they are very convenient. I don't find they save me a whole heck of a lot of time because I'm still like cutting up all the veggies and doing still all cooking. that. I'm still cooking. <laughs> um, but you know, it's nice to have everything pre-portioned. It's just kind of I, I get why I just you know, that's what I'm going for is when you know you're prepping up your food prep everything prep everything ahead of time um so like you know and you only have to wash everything one time and then the rest of the week all you have to do is like little things here and there to get everything thrown together there are some things you have to do the day of because it's just weird if you do it early um so I'm going to do an example uh menu for a week um just for an example of how it would all go go down 
Um, so like say for one week, I'm going to plan meatloaf Monday with mashed cauliflower, taco Tuesday, because of course, uh, chicken parmesan with string beans, salmon with squash and broccoli, quiche and tikka masala with mushrooms and spinach. Our family usually stay, plans about six meals at home, <clears throat> giving us a one weeknight or weekend when we can budget a family meal out. Uh, but this is optional and up to your own and family's inclination and or budget. Um, so looking at the menu, if I looked at this menu, I would purchase when I go to my grocery shop for the week, I would get ground turkey because I prefer ground turkey um, versus beef, uh, four to five pounds of it because uh, I'm doing two meals. Uh, chicken breast as well, four to five pounds, I'm doing two meals. A salmon, I would do two pounds fresh or three pounds frozen because uh, when you freeze fish, anytime you cook fr fish from frozen, even if you thaw it out ahead of time, it's going to have a lot of weeping just because of, again, we talked about the ice crystals and the moisture that's lost. And I mean, the texture is going to be a little different. If you do frozen fish, more power to you. That's absolutely cool. I have frozen fish in my freezer for those rainy days when I want some, you know, fish and I just don't feel like cooking it from fresh because I don't have any. Um, I want to get a quart of egg whites for the quiche because quiche and egg whites are a lower cat, lower cholesterol option, lower fat option for you. Um, you can use regular eggs if you have chickens that provide you with eggs. My girls. <laughs> you can totally do that. But uh, we do egg whites in my house. <clears throat> um, cheddar cheese, I would get a, a pound of that. Uh, low moisture mozzarella, I get a pound of that. Two pounds of mushrooms, a bag of baby spinach. You can get that in the, you know, salad aisle, the big bag of, like, I guess it's, I'm not even sure how many ounces it is, but it's huge. <laughs> it's like probably three ounces because baby spinach. And it cooks down to like a half a cup. Oh my <clears throat> and uh, I would do like a, two medium heads of cauliflower. Um, you can get a larger one. Usually most places sell by the head, not by the pound. Um, but if you get the larger ones, they look like there's so much cauliflower, but then you cut them apart and there's almost nothing but stem because it's all on the outside. So mediums is a good way to go. I wouldn't go too small because then you have to get like more of them. But medium's good. Um, I'd get two cans of string beans or a half pound of fresh if you can find them. Uh, two medium yellow squash or zucchini. A uh, pound of broccoli florets, frozen or fresh, they're pretty much the same either way because the way they're frozen in, in factories is actually very well done uh, for the most part. <coughs> the canned diced tomatoes, uh, of course we touched on the tomatoes being awesome. Uh, sour cream or if you want to do lower fat, low fat Greek yogurt actually is very similar in taste and texture to sour cream. We use it all the time um, at my house for Taco Tuesday. Uh, a jar of tomato sauce, uh, a small can of tomato paste, and tikka masala simmer sauce is probably one of the only f special things on there that's not a standard staple um, that you would find in most grocery stores. Tikka masala is more of an ethnic thing. Most mega marts with an ethnic aisle would have some semblance of a simmer sauce. Or, or you could go all crazy and get the spice mix from the Indian store and follow the directions, and that is up to you. Um, and I also get tortillas because, you know, Taco Tuesday. Um, and when, if I prepped all this, I would um, cut up squash, broccoli, mushrooms, and split them each in half, So, because they're all in different meals. Um, I'd also break the cauliflower into florets to save me some time on Monday, because you don't want to cook the cauliflower until you actually get to the point where you're making the mashed cauliflower, but you want to get it broken up ahead of time so you don't have any extra cutting to do. Um, you want to pre-shed the cheeses, all of them, just shred all of them. And I would I portion them out into like four ounce bag for the mashed cauliflower, and then the rest of it in a different bag for um, the quiche. And then the cheddar, I would do four ounces for the tacos, and then the rest for, oh wait, no, the mozzarella goes to the Parmesan. <laughs> call it cheddar goes for the quiche. Um, and then uh, after I portion out the veggies, because cross-contamination, you know, uh, you don't want to do the meat first because you want to cut the veggies on a clean board, and then you can just mold, pull the meat out. And I would just separate it two and a half pounds, two to two and a half pounds for a family of four. I have a teenager, he eats all the time, and I tend to go a little heavier on the proteins with my family just because I have a teenager. And uh, that's, a, that's just life for me. Um, so that's, you portion each one out. You can have the option of cutting up the chicken for the tikka masala if you want. Keep the chicken for the parmesan in, you know, one piece because it's a little easier. Um, and then the ground beef, you can even brown the ground turkey for the... Um, Taco Tuesday, you can grab that ahead of time, add the spice mix, and just put, put it in a bag or a container, and, you know, That's something good pull it out, and you can just reheat it in the skillet, or even in the microwave, and then everything's done, so you don't have to really worry about it, especially tacos, they, they, there's so much, like, little bits and bobs to tacos, it's kind of nice just to have everything all done already, um, and then the quiche is something also that can be prepped ahead of time, uh, you would just mix the 
veggies, and I would do like half the broccoli, half the squash, half the spinach in a bowl with the egg whites, salt, pepper to taste. I like the garlic, all the garlic. Um, and then put the cheese, the leftover cheddar cheese in there, and then you can put it in a casserole dish and uh, cover it tightly, put it in the fridge if you can find a space, um, and then you're good. You, like, you don't have to worry about it, you just toss it in the oven. It, it is one of the more time intensive ones because it, it has to cook for like 45 minutes It's because you're putting in a huge casserole dish. You can get around that by putting them in like a pie pan in like a couple make different pie shallower. pans. Make it shallower and smaller and you might be able to wait like 40 minutes but if you put it in the casserole dish you're looking at almost an hour to cook because it's got to get all the way through and if you pull it out and it still jiggles it's not done because when you cut it in it goes everywhere. <laughs> you only do that once before you realize that's not what you do. Um, so yeah uh, that's some really tips and tricks to prep and then once you've done that all you got to do is like you know the meatloaf you just mix the day of and you could theoretically do the meatloaf ahead of time but tomato paste your I put mushrooms in mine meatloaf because I like the texture of mushrooms and it kind of bulks it up a little bit um but you can do that ahead of time if you really want to but a lot of times I put breadcrumbs in there so they get a little weird if you leave them in there too long <laughs> just a day of mix it together throw it in um <clears throat> so as you noticed much of the produce on the shopping list that I've used is is more than one recipe like the mushrooms are in two different things the spinach is in two different things the zucchini is split up into two different things because it's a great way to buy in bulk or a larger amount and use all of it. Uh, I like the uh, the quiche because any leftover vegetables that you have from the week you can just toss in that quiche and uh, it's good. It's good to go. My, my meal plan is a little bit different. Um, we tend to be very moody eaters so like <laughs> I, I can make these really elaborate meal plans but by the time the day of the said de meal we, we, don't, we don't feel like it. We don't have time. We just don't feel like it. So we kind of do a slightly different twist on meal planning. Um, it's like the component or building block prep. So what I do in the beginning of the week or like on my Sunday is I make just the basics. So like I'll make a, a couple batches of beans or and grains, like if it's gonna be, a, do we feel like rice this week or do we feel like quinoa? Ooh, fancy. <laughs> fancy, yes. Um, then I make, um, I have a bread maker, it's just really convenient. And you can get those really cheap, by the way, if you keep an eye out for them in thrift markets, you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. Because they're expensive. Yeah, but we go through a lot of bread, so I'm, I'm not low carb. So we put, we make a, a loaf of bread. Um, we chop up the hearty vegetables, like your carrots, your peppers, um, your celery, anything that you kind of already see in the grocery store pre-cut, you can do those at home for a lot less. Oh, you pay for the convenience. Oh, right. So that way we have a bunch of things at hand and then I can use those building blocks to throw in and spice as we feel. So I make it a big batch of chickpeas. And if we feel like Indian food, we can do a nice little curry over the rice. If we, if it's hot and we don't feel like doing a lot of work, we can make a chickpea salad, which by the way, if you don't know what that is, but it sounds good, we're gonna feature that recipe in our beans deck program in November. Yep. So there's a lead in. Yeah, um, shameless plug. Or if we are feeling very salady or snacky, you can air fry chickpeas and make almost like those little Croutons with yeah, protein. Yeah, yeah. I've made those before. Uh, they're they're really good. There's a very fine line between done and charred, though. I like the air fryer. It kind of prevents. It, it little, does. It does. I've tried so. the the oven, and, and I I might have overdone them. Yeah. Once. And if I do a batch of bake, uh, black beans, you can make tacos or burritos with them. You can put them in a chili or a soup. You can um, make really good. There's a um, also I like to do like a black bean and, ma and mango salad. It's oh, that's really, different. It's super good. That's different. Yeah, it kind of has that Caribbean esque flavor. It, it seems like it might. Yeah. It's fruity and proteiny. Uh, so that's not really a word. Sorry. We can make it a word. It's right? fine. So that kind of gives us a little bit more flexibility and I use whatever I cook in more than one meal so there's less less waste. Yeah. And then at the end of the week, we tend to do like the whole kitchen, everything but the kitchen sink. It can either be a quiche like you mentioned because I've got eggs at home um, and, or a soup, a casserole. You just throw out all the leftovers, everything that's in the refrigerator, clear it out and it becomes another new meal that's not just leftovers. Okay. So we tend to cook four times a week like the cooked meals four times a week, three or four, 
um, and then have the leftovers, and then dinner at my mom's on Sunday. So right. it's that's like, your night out. <laughs> so that's my night out. We also still do a date night like every Saturday. Not every Saturday, like maybe once or twice a month, we'll go out to a date night on Saturday. So it's like we can do that, but still have enough stuff at home so we're not tempted to pick up a meal on the way home. We know everything's all pre cut, pre chopped. We can style it however we want. And it's all there. So meal prep is done. It's just the cooking time, yeah. which is usually about 30 to 45 minutes yeah. at most. And especially if you don't have any meat options, your cooking time, if your beans are already soaked and cooked. Instapot, by the way, plug. Oh. I, I, we, we're not, we're not put <laughs> sponsored for, by anybody. Yeah. But <laughs> doing batch cooking, you probably want to get either a pressure cooker or Instapot. It'll save so much time and money. It will. I mean, unless you want to sit there for three hours and watch the beans boil. Yes, and you can make fancy yogurt. With your Instapot. <laughs> or cheese, because sometimes it turns into cheese. Yeah, and, and it's also, if you're doing, like, soups and stews, it's a way to get it done. I mean, you have to do the preheat and cool down, but if you cook it in, like, quote-unquote, cook it in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, versus, you know, an hour in your oven, mm -hmm. it's it's a good time saver as well. Oh, yeah. so you don't need it to do meal prep. So, yeah, that's kind of what we do. It works for us. but And knowing that we have food prepped in the refrigerator kind of stops that temptation mm -hmm. just to eat out. Oh, yeah. And there are also times where, like, we'll do what I call smorgasbord, leftover smorgasbord. Uh, you have a bunch of little teeny, like, little containers of, like, leftovers from various dinners throughout the week. And it's the end of the week, and it's, like, Saturday afternoon, and everyone's like, I'm hungry because they're about to riot. And... Um, I'll be like, well, let me pull out all the containers. And it's never a whole lot of one thing. It's like one serving. So you really can't use it for a whole meal, but like everyone can pick what they want. Yeah, uh, my husband has like a two day, like he can't eat the same thing twice, more than twice a week. So like anything other than that, we're just gonna throw away. So yeah. we no longer do those really big batches of like soup or lasagna or something where, you know, it, the proportions are like serves 12. There's only two of us and we're not gonna eat that all week long. And even Eastern Shore portions, that's still a lot. Yeah. And that's a thing, man, Eastern Shore portions. You go to those bougie restaurants in, like, big cities, and they're like, here's a portion, and I'm like, are you kidding me? $20 for a teeny <laughs> tiny little thing on a plate. I'm like, no. But, yeah, even with the Eastern Shore portions, you still, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, unless you're going to freeze it to eat it later, like, next month, you're not going to eat. A I, well, some people do that online. Like, I've seen videos oh, yeah. where they'll, like, literally eat the same two things for dinner at or, all Or, like, take it to long. lunch. They take the same thing to lunch every oh, day. And I'm like, can't do that. Don't punish yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. If that's what you want to do and you're okay with that, you do you. But be honest with yourself. Be honest, meal, yeah. meal planning and saving money is about being honest about what you can and will eat and what you're willing to do during the week. Right, because I don't know how many times I've had to apologize to the avocado as I throw it away because it is no longer any good because I swear I was going to eat it. And That teeny tiny window between not ripe enough to overripe. The worst is pears. They are underripe, underripe, underripe in five seconds where it's perfect and then it's overripe. You missed your window. Yeah. Sorry, guys. So be careful when you meal plan, especially if it's new to you. Be very realistic. Oh, and, yeah. and start small. Oh, for sure. Do one week at a time and then, like, you know. If or you, even three meals at a time. <laughs> right. You can do, like, three meals. Just, just you know, even if it's if it's your goal to eat home more to save money. because eat healthier. You're eating healthier as well. Um, you know, try out little, like, just try planning a little bit and see how that works. Keep the meals simple. Oh. Don't don't go don't go for like twelve ingredient menus. Oh yeah, uh, no. uh, recipes. Pick good old simple staples that you know everyone yeah. in your family are going to eat. It doesn't have to be that fancy bourgeois restaurant. Right, right, meal. right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean it could be something simple as like roasted oven roasted chicken, asparagus, and string beans, or asparagus potatoes. You know, just simple stuff. You'll have a you know a, a protein and two sides. That's usually good enough for my yeah. family anyway. Um, I mean, keep it simple. You know what afterwards. Yeah. Stupid. I don't want to use that word. Keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. And this kind of component meal block or planning requires you to have a very good well-stocked pantry. Ah, yes. Having a well-stocked pantry is essential to meal planning. It allows you to focus on just the perishable items on the menu when you're shopping, and this saves time because um, you're not running around the entire store. You just kind of stick to the perimeter. The fresh stuff that the you just need for that week. Right. Some of my essentials that I use in my kitchen um, are including, but not limited to, uh, rice, instant potatoes, elbow noodles because mac and cheese, uh, oats, uh, breadcrumbs, canned tomatoes, diced, stewed, and the, uh, I don't know if it's a, a brand, 
Rotel. Um, it's those peppers and tomatoes. I know it's kind of like Velcro, where the brand is actually the product because it's so ubiquitous in our, our language, but it, it's the Rotel style tomatoes. Um, a variety of canned veggies, because we're not canned veggie snobs. Uh, soy sauce, always useful. Oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, various spices, um, etc. Garlic, of course, because like minced garlic in the fridge, I just put that in everything. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I stopped buying fresh garlic for so much because it's so much easier to have the jar in my refrigerator. Oh, I know. It's like, I get I have these little bulb of garlic. You're just going to hang there and look pretty. I'm not using you. Decoration purposes only. For decoration. <laughs> I need the plastic ones I sell in the hobby shop. Oh, fancy. Mm-hmm. I let mine sprout and then plant them in the garden. <laughs> no, I, I've, I've let it sprout, but I've always just, like, chucked them in the compost. I haven't had that come up yet. That's, um, how I, that's how I tell myself that I didn't go to waste. It didn't go to waste. and go plant it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there's, they're generally easy. These All these things are generally easy to find in bulk. And, of course, using your good, you know, good sense when you're shopping in bulk. Am I going to use this before it goes bad or gets caked in the humidity of the eastern shore? That is totally up to you and your, you know, your knowledge of your own habits. That's the best way, I think, to save money, really, because if you have a nice, well-stocked pantry, things that have a long shelf life, um, if you buy them when they're on sale, like if it's a really good sale, you'll know your price points as you shop. The things that you actually eat, you'll know they cost around. Yeah. Um, If there's a really good sale, buy more than one. Oh, there's a sale of soy sauce. Oh, there's a sale of peanut butter. Oh, there's a sale on canned goods. Well, I'll just buy one for now and then maybe one or two for later. And that's how you can gradually build up a pantry that actually saves you money. Yeah, because if you have it on hand... You don't necessarily have to freak out about replacing it if you have a backup. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, when you do get around to having the extra, you know, space in your budget to resupply it, you just resupply it and you're not really stressed because you still have a backup. And you're willing to dry out the recipes if you know you've got most of the ingredients, like 90% already in your pantry. It's just a couple of fresh items that you have to check to see if you have. I have so many times where I've been, you know, scrolling through the internet because that's what you do. And I've seen, like, a recipe for a cake. And I'm like, I have that. I have that. I have that. Or, like, even a dinner. I'm like, ooh, I have all these things in my pantry. I can make this without even having to go to the store because we all know going to the store is a trial sometimes. Yeah, we're getting delivery. Like, I don't live in an area that very many, mm. that nothing delivers to. Nothing but. delivers to your place. <laughs> but if you live, like, in, in, in Salisbury or... Civilization. Or, you know, civilization. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, oh, I can make this real quick. Even if it's a simple pasta dish, I can just put the water on, throw a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff in it, make us some sauce, pow. You know, I don't need to call and spend, like, $30. Oh my gosh. I, can't, I can't even. It's honestly. like you spend the... No, I'm not saying don't pay your delivery drivers, please. Or, yeah, you know, to try to make a living, too. <laughs> but when you have it delivered, it's going to cost you so much more money. So much more money. And your, your essentials, they could be different depending on your personal taste. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will, like, I... There are certain things that I will not buy because I know my family and myself, we just don't like them. And that's okay. And it might be different. Like, I'm never going to buy Brussels sprouts. I personally don't <gasps> care for them. I know. I no. know. See, Amy will buy Brussels sprouts because she will eat them. We probably have more frozen Brussels sprouts in our <laughs> freezer than probably any other frozen vegetable, except for maybe broccoli. Maybe they might be eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're a broccoli Brussels sprouts person. I love me some broccoli, and I know they're in the same family. Like, Brussels sprouts and broccoli are cousins. Speaking of you. Don't on that long, that, that brassica family. <sighs> yeah, I know. that. What is it? Is it herbology? Yeah. <laughs> um, they're cousins. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just had them cooked way too much when I was a kid. Like too I mushy? Think it was the ones like my grandmother made them and they were like this is not the grandmother the frozen piece, the other grandmother. She did the Eastern Shore boil it till it's mush type approach. Um and it was just I never enjoyed them so I kinda like I yeah. had that almost like that not quite trauma but well, I don't eat them. We always tell people like if you don't like Brussels sprouts, try fresh Brussels sprouts roasted in the oven mm-hmm. and you will be amazed about and how yummy they are. My sister's like, I love Brussels sprouts. I've made them roasted with balsamic and parmesan mm-hmm. and she's like, try them and I'm like, okay, and they're not bad. But I'm not gonna go out of my way to go get them. And it's also kind of that fancy way of cooking. Your kids probably wouldn't wouldn't I know. Actually no, I, I know of one of you you have a you have a foodie. Your teenager's a foodie. He's a so foodie. he's definitely willing to try. Oh yeah, no, he he's, he refuses to eat shrimp for some reason. Like he does not like shrimp, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. It just means I can't make shrimp for my family. So yeah, I mean, know what you what you will eat, and if you buy them, especially when it's on sale, even when it's not on sale, have a well stocked pantry. But if it is on sale, grab a couple of more because yeah. you know you're going to use it. And uh, like me, like we have, oh, we always have like pastas and things like that. So, you know, we could probably live off our pantry for quite a while and not go for anything fresh. But we do tend to get almost every week, we always check that we have 
onions, carrots, and potatoes, celery. Those are my main, like, quote-unquote, fresh stuff. Mm -hmm. So we tend to always make sure we have that in the fridge, and then we can pretty much make anything we want. Oh, yeah, I usually do uh, with my family, and everyone has different, like, basics that they have to have. Um, and you'll find that you'll have certain ones that you really like. And I do like cauliflower for its versatility. It can be riced, and you can pretend like you're eating rice. You're not. Um, <laughs> you can but I am in my house. <laughs> or you can have, you know, make them into mashed potato style, you know, whatever. And broccoli as well is another one of them we really, really like. And mushrooms. We always have mushrooms because it's a really great way to bulk up a meat dish if you're cooking because that stuff can handle long cooking times with no... Uh, structural integrity issues like some vegetables if you cook too long they will become mush and one mm -hmm. with the broth mushrooms do not do that they just like hang out and say oh what's up man yeah with mushrooms if you really try mushrooms go for whole mushrooms yes. and slice them yourself they charge like almost double for sliced mm -hmm. mushrooms and they look kind of right and if slicing mushrooms seems intimidating Get an egg slicer. You probably have one of those floating around oh, your cabinets. I don't Use an egg slicer. I should get one. You should get an egg slicer. Make sure you take the stems off because you want to put them down flat side. Because, or the way the thing, depending on how your egg slicer is set up, if it has that little concave, you put them upside down. Just <gasps> cut through that it. That is so great. Yeah, mul it's a multitasker. Or I, I just have my husband do all the, the chopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I, I mean, I usually try to let my 13 year old do the chopping, but. Sometimes I see him running around with a knife, and I'm not sure if it's a good idea. No, I just I just pick, pick out the biggest knife in the, in the drawer. My husband, I'm accident prone, and he's had to, uh, uh, yeah. So as soon as I pick up a really big knife, he's like, no, honey, let me do all the chopping. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's saving money means not going to the emergency room. Oh, this is true because they charge you for that. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a use, and you get your vegetables and and planning out your meals, you know, and the takeaway from this whole meal planning uh, escapade uh, is probably going to be, I would hope that would be um, overlapping as much as you can. Like, you know, you can buy f three different types of vegetables, four different types of vegetables, and like rearrange them throughout different meals to keep it interesting, mm -hmm. keep it different, and you don't have to be locked into like the same meal every night or even the same like genre of meal. Um, like I said, we, we do a lot of low carb in our house. That's just how we choose to do. Um, because it, it works for us, and it might not work for you, and that's fine. Um, but you discover ways to make it work, and we do, like, certain, we, we find ourselves sticking with just certain vegetables. Yeah, we have to limit ourselves, because you do, especially if you go to grocery shopping hungry, like, you'll go through that produce <laughs> aisle, and you will buy so much fruits and vegetables because you want to be healthy, and it's good for you, and, and you know, you want to eat mm -hmm. all of this. Personally, if I go to the store hungry, I am the proud owner of the snack aisle. Uh, well... I, I've, I've been known to go on produce binges at Sam's Club, and I know I can't you go know to you're all not that vegetables. Help. Not yeah, like, two people. Yeah, grapes don't freeze well. Oh, but gosh, I, love, I have to get grapes every time. Sam's Clubs have really good grapes. They do, they do, and you got to, like, make sure you eat them all. And I have, like, a bag of grapes sitting in my fridge right now that's slowly going shrivelly because no one is eating them. I guess you can put them in the dehydrator and make raisins. <laughs> that kind of time. <laughs> Frozen grapes, by the way, are really tasty. They are. You just can't let them thaw because then they deflate like a flan in the cupboard. So, like, you might want to limit your options by, by, by focusing on buying smaller, smaller amounts and then reusing them in multiple meals. Exactly. And then you don't have as much extraneous veggies floating around. To um, going bad in your refrigerator. And going bad in your fridge, for sure. That, that Saturday refrigerator sh of shame throw out where you're mm -hmm. clearing your refrigerator out and you're throwing all that food away. Yes. Uh, I always refer to it as when the, the leftovers have started having democratic elections because the civilization has progressed that far. So scary. It's terrifying. Um, sometimes there's, I, I like, a lot of times I like to use those little uh, meat containers, lunch meat containers, you know, the ones that burns with Ilshire arms, um, that has the red lid. Um, I like to use those for leftovers over and over because if, if my husband takes it to work and forgets to bring it home or it sits in his car in the summertime for a couple of weeks and, again, is having democratic elections, um, I don't feel so bad about tossing it because I am not opening that <laughs> and washing it. No way, I am no, no, way. no way, no how. So I have some nice containers that I use for refrigerated stuff in the fridge, and they don't leave the house. The things that leave the house, the ones that they don't care if they never come back. Yeah, and if you're new to meal planning and some of you're you're changing your your normal thing, uh, my advice is ask your family members for their top five meals. Yeah, Amy, what is one of your top five meals? Oh gosh, probably something like a curry or a pasta dish. Okay. There's so much. I'm not a picky eater. And they're very so, versatile too. Yeah. So we tend to, our treats are, are curries and pastas. Cool. 
Oh, and, 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 and Mexican. And Mexican. Tuesday. Taco Tuesday? El Nino? Oh, some days it's just Nacho Tuesday. Oh, man, we did that the other day. We A uh, guy, one of my, my husband's friends uh, from work, gave him some uh, home-smoked brisket. Okay. Um, it's sitting in a plastic bag in my fridge. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And I'm like, you know what? Let's do brisket nachos. So we had that the thing. That made things. your family happy. It made my family super happy. I just tossed that in the pan warmed it through, put a lot of mushrooms in there, some peppers and onions, and then just had brisket nachos. And it was a hit. Uh, but it was a really good way to utilize, like, the, what are we going to do with this random protein sitting in my fridge? Oh, I'll just throw it on nachos, because that always makes things better. I actually like food meal planning in fall and winter, because I'm all about the comfort soups and mm-hmm. stews and casseroles. So you know my husband does not like soup? Maybe he just hasn't met the right soup. Well, for a long time, I was uh, getting him to eat soup by calling it stew. Yes, yeah, don't eat stew. stew. That, that seems more hearty it's and stick to the soup. ribs. <laughs> it's still a soup. And then we do lots of salads and things mm-hmm. in, the, in the spring and fall. Uh, spring so you're and more seasonal. Yeah. Your, your favorite meal is really based on what kind of type of time of the year it is. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, we tend to do uh, our family favorite anyway. The one that everyone agrees we like is what my littlest calls slammin' because he thinks it's funny to call it slammin' when it's actually salmon. Um, I just get the two pound slab of salmon and I like to buy it fresh. It's not so bad. I usually go to Aldi and they have good prices on their meats. They do. We're not sponsored. We're not sponsored. Sh- <laughs> We've been doing a lot of unsponsored ads. Because we're poor and we know how to make this that, is true. Make that wallet stretch. <laughs> it's true. So uh, I usually get the two pound slab of salmon and I do broccoli and mashed cauliflower alongside. And that's like our favorite go to once a week meal. It's um, so great that your family that wants to eat that healthy, you know, it's like they don't have really a choice, healthy. but sure, they oh, want to. <laughs> uh, it's, I have, we have lots of picky eaters in our family. That's and it's, fair. It's like my mother used to have to make like three meals just to like. To, to feed everybody. They'd be out in the woods hunting their own dinner if they expect me to make three meals. Actually, my, my siblings and their children probably could go feral. <laughs> well, if we live by the river, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So uh, let's have a question for the audience if you're listening and you'd like to participate in our little conversation. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, in the comment section on any of the podcast sites that you are using, uh, feel free to post a comment because our question of the month is going to be, what are your favorite healthy meals? Do you have a family favorite or even one that you want to try? Um, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And join us next week, or next month. Join us next month as we discuss various at-home exercises that anyone can do. Thanks for listening. Future episodes may feature a variety of topics, ranging from storytelling, arts and crafts, readers' advisory, reference questions, discussion, and more. We also encourage feedback through our Facebook page or in the comments section on the podcast. Visit us online at www.wicomicolibraries.org. Search for Wicomico Libraries on your favorite podcasting site. You can call us at 410-546-5397, or you can email us at center at wicomico.org. That is C-E-N-T-R-E at